All right, pictured here are two Arduino boards. One's a Uno-type clone on the left. The other one is a Nano-type clone on the right. Both of their LEDs, which is connected to digital pin 13, is blinking. All right, big deal. We got some LEDs blinking. What we're going to discuss in this is different ways to blink an LED. You can do it the not so smart way or you can do it on the smart way. The LED that's blinking on the right uses 1,030 bytes to blink a stupid LED of all the cr nonsense, 1,030 bytes. Or actually, um, around 600 bytes because no if you think about your Arduino compiler and you had a empty loop and a completely empty setup it's going to be 444 bytes or so with nothing in it so look at it this way the Arduino that's blinking the LED on the right takes a thousand uh, 30 bytes or well over 600 bytes of program memory to simply blink an LED. The one on the left, same hardware, same, essentially same compiler, everything, takes 58 bytes. Think about that. Less than one-tenth of the memory usage that you have with the one on the right. On the left, uses a tenth of the programming code and as the one on the right and it operates much faster. If you have timing critical applications, you can't sit here and diddle around trying to flip a bit or an output pin. So that is going to be our discussion here, is how to more directly address the I.O. pins on the Arduino. Let's start looking around. Before we get into the programming itself, let's review real quick what an Arduino actually is. It's an ATmega168 or similar type microcontroller that has firmware installed um, to, um, to operate what you know as Arduino. What we're doing here is bypassing many of the routines that are used to access the pins and we're going to access them directly. In this case, we're going to constant. We have um, six I/O pins we can access. That's PB0 through PB5. Those are digital pins 8 through 13. We can also access PD0 through PD7, uh, which are digital pins z um, 0 through 7. In this case, PB5 is digital pin 13. That is what we are concerned with. All right, this sample program comes right out of your Arduino software. It's the little program called Blink. You can load it, compile it, and you can make the LED on um, digital pin 13 blink on and off. What are we actually doing here? First, we're going to set up the pin that's an electrical pin which we saw in the hardware, which actually comes out to be um, port B5, we're going to, which is digital pin 13. We're going to set it to be an output. But to use pin mode just to set the output the input or output on a single pin is costing us 130 bytes of code. Now let's go down here to loop. Okay, you should know what loop is. It just runs back and forth, back and forth. First of all, we're going to use a digital write to uh, digital pin 13. We're going to send it high. Well, just turning on a single bit cost us 218 bytes. Uh, so, okay, now we're going to delay a second. The delay routine alone cost us another 176 bytes. 
And then we're going to use digital write again to turn the LED on digital pin 13 off. Since I already um, used it once and it's in the system, no matter how many times I call it again, it's going to cost me another 8 bytes. Then I'm going to delay another second. That'll cost me another 12 bytes. Overall, simply to blink an LED on and off has cost me 1,030 bytes of code, of in which 450 of those bytes are simply taken up by setup and loop. If setup and loop were empty, you'd still use 450 bytes, like it or not. So just to blink the LED is costing me 580 bytes of code. This is ridiculous. We're going to learn how to do better than this. All right, now I'm going to um, speed things up a bit. I'm using direct port access, which, our, which the Arduino compiler does recognize, to set up um, the registers for the I.O., or thus digital pin 13. Instead of uh, what I did here was set the um, bits in the data direction register for B directly. And this one right here represents digital, um, that would be PB5 being programmed as an output. See, that's PB0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 and 7 are not available because they're the crystal and so forth. The, uh, the explanation for ORs and ANDs are in a completely different video. Be sure you watch that one to get a closer look at that. Down here, instead, so by not using pin mode, I went from 200 and something bytes down to 4 bytes. Down here, I'm used setting port B directly. I'm turning on a bit using a bitwise OR. That's also explained in a different video. And so I went from hundreds of bytes down to two bytes. And then I used a bitwise AND to turn it off. So the OR turns the LED on. The AND turns the LED off. That's explained in a separate video. Let's move on. Here we're doing the same thing all over again. Um, I'm, use, I'm going ahead and clearing out port B. I used an AND to make sure that the output on port B, which is PB5, is turned off so the LED is off. Remember, PB5 is digital pin 13. Now I'm going to use what is called an XOR function. Notice again that I'm going to take port B and XOR it with this. This is um, hexadecimal 20. <clears throat> That's, that will be explained a little later as well. XOR, anytime a bit is a 1 that is XORed with a corresponding bit somewhere else, it flips the bit. If it's high, it goes low. If it's low, it goes high. The rest of these being 0, does nothing to the other bits in the port B, which, which PB5, of course, is digital pin 13. Maybe I have other stuff connected to these other pins, like digital pin 8 through 12, and I don't want to disturb them. So that's why these are zeros. The only bit affected is PB5, and it's done by this one. So what have I done here? got rid of 130 bytes on pin mode. So I'm down to four bytes, two bytes at six bytes, 14 bytes, and eh, still got a deal. And by the way, I don't need to do it once, delay, do it again, delay. All I'm down to is this one eight bit line, and I still got the delay at five, uh, delay routine, which is still going to cost me 170 bytes. Um, 
So far now, I've gone down to 620 bytes, which 440 or 450, depending on which compiler you use, is going to be um, set up and loop. So we're down to not much bytes. Now we've managed to drop it to 58 bytes. How did I do that? Okay, I eliminated the use of pin mode by accessing the data direction register directly. I cleared out, instead of uh, using something like digital write, to set port uh, PB digital pin 13 to zero, I used an AND function. Now I'm still using my um, XOR function down here, which will toggle the bit through every loop. But now I have written my own delay loop, which took me from, uh, oh, I don't know, 170 bytes down to 44 bytes. How did I do it? First of all, we have the delay microseconds function. In this case, 1,000 microseconds is one millisecond. That takes 26 bytes of code. Then I put it in a for loop and set it to 500 repetitions, or 500 or so repetitions. Uh, the for loop is 18 bytes. 18 plus 26 is 44, plus um, 8 is 52, 54, 58. I do the very same thing I was doing with over, with something like 1,030 bytes, well, get rid of the 450 or whatever. I have reduced 600 and something bytes of code down to 58. So this is an exercise, and what's the advantages of this? Fast. It, I'm running a lot less code instead of 130 bytes. Um, to operate on. I'm using four. Fast. Real fast. And this is vital if you're using some high-speed switching for your projects where you really have to high-speed switch some hardware without all the delays. And second, the code can be a little bit portable. Like I said, here's your own uh, millisecond delay loop which is from which is a for loop down to here not bad at all. So there we are, we went from hundreds and hundreds of bytes down to 58 bytes to do the same thing. Be sure to check out my other video on how to use ands and ors to set and clear bits. Uh, let me give you a brief explanation. Now we'll just skip that. Just go to the other video on ands and ors and setting bits, and it'll explain the ports a little more, but this is an exercise in coding. Have fun, get out there, program, and make something.